The last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world to show how to be closer to Allah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When two of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's greatest supporters, Abu Talib and Khadija peace be upon her, died, the bad Quraysh got the chance to insult Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam everywhere. Once. A very bad man came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and threw dust on his head. When the prophet went back to his house, one of his daughters started to cry and helped him wash out his head. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told his daughter not to worry for him because Allah subhanahu wa taala would always protect him. In that situation. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam needed someone to take care of the family. One day, one of his neighbor, who was a woman, came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with a marriage proposal with Sauda and Aisha peace be upon them. Sauda peace be upon her was a widow and she had at least 5 children. She and her ex-husband became Muslims during the beginning times of Islam. During the hard times that the Quraysh were giving them, they had to migrate to Abyssinia or Ethiopia with the second group of Muslims who escaped from Mecca. After a few years, her husband died. She and her family had to face a very hard time for Islam. Sauda peace be upon her was one of the great women that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's wife. So, Sauda peace be upon her was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's second wife? Yes. Sauda peace be upon her was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's second wife. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had another plan for the future of Islam. Every movement of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life was very important to understand the Islamic way of life. So that meant his very private life was also very important for Muslims to know. For this great plan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Aisha peace be upon her. From her childhood, she was very bright and smart. She was also very beautiful and came from a very noble family. Her father's name was Abu Bakr peace be upon him, who was a very close friend of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and who was also the first khalifa of Islam. At that time, people used to get married very very early. When Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost his first wife, Aisha peace be upon her was around 6 years old. Even though she was really young, many people came with marriage proposals all asking for her hand. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her a very special woman in history. In the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Prophet Jesus peace be upon him's mother, Maryam peace be upon her, special. So For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to marry Aisha peace be upon her. But she was a little girl who was only 6 years old. She did not know anything about how to take care of a family. Wait, at that time did she even reach maturity yet? No, she did not reach her maturity at that time. That's why the prophet did not start a family with her at that time. When she reached her maturity as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, the prophet started a family with her. Basically, in the present time, you can consider that at the age of 6 years old, Aisha peace be upon him was engaged with the prophet, and when she was 9 years old, 
they started their married life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's great plan. She was married to the Prophet for only about nine years. During that early time, it was the best time to learn any type of education. Aisha, peace be upon her, started her education when she was nine years old, which she learned from her husband, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, and continued her education about Islam until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's death when she was only 18 years old. And that's why in history, she had the third biggest collection of hadith in Islam. And the topics that cover women's issues, she had the number one biggest hadith collection in Islam. No other wife of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam collected that many hadith like Aisha peace be upon her did. She was the greatest female scholar of Islam. Mashallah, she did a great job for Islam. So, what happened to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after Abu Talib and Khadija peace be upon her's death? After Abu Talib and Khadija peace be upon her's death, it was very difficult for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to talk about Islam to the people of Mecca. So, he decided to go outside of Mecca to invite the people to Islam. As a plan, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his adopted son, Zaid peace be upon him, started their journey to Taif by walking. It was almost 60 miles east from Mecca. On his way, whenever he saw any tribe, he invited them to Islam. But the people rejected him as a prophet. Finally, they reached the city of Taif. At first, he met three brothers who were the leaders of Taif. The Prophet invited them to Islam and requested to help him spread Islam to their people. Those three brothers became very angry and rude with the Prophet and removed him out from their land. Muhammad wasallam became very sad for their very bad behavior. He was in town for 10 days. In that time, he met all of the other leaders and met with many people to talk about Islam. But, unfortunately, not a single person accepted Islam. Instead, they forced him to leave Ta'if. It's so sad to see that the people of Ta'if were really bad. All of the bad people started to give him a hard time. They even let their children go and give a hard time to the Prophet. On the last day, a group of very bad people and their children ran after the Prophet. They started to abuse the Prophet and started throwing stones at him. Because of the stones, his feet started to bleed. So, Zaid peace be upon him tried very hard to protect Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Both of them had to run out from that place. Three miles from that place, finally they found a garden to take a rest. At that time, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was extremely tired and he had pain all over his body. It was one of the worst days of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life. He was feeling extremely sad because of how the bad people behaved with him. So he prayed to the one and only God to give him strength and support him through his difficult time. He also asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to be angry with him. When the owners of the garden saw Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Zaid peace be upon him, they felt really bad and sent some grapes and sent it to them by one of their slaves. The Prophet took those grapes and after saying Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah, and then he started to eat. When the Prophet said Bismillah, 
that attracted the slave person. When the slave told him that he was a Christian and he was from Nineveh, Iraq, Muhammad وسلم, reminded him about Prophet Yunus or Jonah peace be upon him who was also from the same city Nineveh, Iraq and recited some of the Quranic verses about Yunus peace be upon him. Muhammad وسلم, also told him that he was a prophet like Yunus peace be upon him. The slave was very surprised and happy to hear that and became a Muslim. Masha Allah, a true Christian, easily recognized the true prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Zayd peace be upon him started their journey back to Mecca. At that time, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very tired and heartbroken because of the people of Taif's bad behavior. In the middle of their journey, the Prophet noticed that there was a huge cloud following them. When he looked up, he saw Angel Jibrail peace be upon him up there. Beside him was another angel. That other angel is the one who controls the mountains. They told Muhammad وسلم, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to fulfill his wish. If Muhammad وسلم, wanted the angels to destroy the city of Taif, the angel of the mountains would destroy the city of Taif with the big mountains. But the Prophet forgave the people of Ta'if and prayed for them to become Muslims instead. Jibreel peace be upon him's visit made Muhammad وسلم, very happy and he became mentally stronger to spread Islam. We provide everything we create for free and are committed to keeping it that way for millions of Muslims and non-Muslims all over the world. 100% of our operations are crowdfunded from our generous audience. We want to continue our Dawah mission and we can do so with your help. All donations are Tzadakai Zaria, which continues to benefit you when you pass away from this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your generosity and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the highest reward to you and your family in this world and the hereafter. The Prophet Story